blissfully sweet behind the scenes. This week I'm going to be taking more of a secret tips type of theme to the video. It won't, it'll be a little bit of a mix of behind the scenes and tutorial, but it'll be more about how did you do that. So that's what I'm going to show you. As you can see from the video clip before, you could see that I've made a farmhouse and a barnyard themed cake and it was so much fun to make. And I wanted to add something a little bit special to it as well. Plus I wanted to think of a different way of how to include the animals in the cake. So all of a sudden, I something popped up in my head and I wanted to put the animals inside the barn. So I thought, oh, well, if they're inside the barn, maybe I could leave the doors open. And I thought, hang, hang on, why don't I make the doors open? So I thought, I think I can do this. And I came up with a little solution on how to do it. So you'll see now how I have made those doors open. And it's a very simple thing that you can easily do. And you have most people, I assume all people, would have these tools at home. So... Barnyard door is going to be red, so I've got my red fondant, rolling pin, and my corn flour. But my secret tool, are you ready? Are you waiting for it? Straws. Hmm. So what they're going to do, this is going to be inside my fondant door on both sides. What I have done on my barn cake, and I'm actually going to show you that cake when it's finished and I'm putting the doors on, is I have... Doweled to drilled two dowels into the cake board. So they're going to be basically the pivot tool for my door. So when I go to put the doors on, all I will have to do is slide these down onto those skewers that are fastened into the board. And so what I'll, all I'll have to do is swing open the doors because these will continue to go around. Hopefully you can understand that. It's not the problem I explaining it is harder than actually doing it. So what I'm going to do is show you how I've made it. I've you know I've showed you the mechanics and how I'm going to make it. But the first thing you have to do is make sure you have the right dimensions for your door. Last thing you want to do is make them too small. Um, you can make them bigger, but making them too small could be a little bit harder. So I have cut these straws down to the exact height of what my door will be. The span of my door, of the whole doorway, is 13 centimetres. So each door, because I'm going to have two doors that swing open, each door will be six and a half centimetres wide, and that'll be from this side of the door, the door frame all the way across to the other side. So that's what you're going to see me making now. I'm going to make it I'm going to let it dry, I'm going to add the details onto, onto it and then what you'll see at the end is me placing it on the cake and you'll see the finished product. So here we go, wish me luck, first time again, I love a good first time thing and I will see you in time lapse. <music> see how easy it was to make those doors overlapping the fondant over the straws to make sure that it is double thickness and it goes around those straws to provide a lot more stability for your doors. I allowed them to dry straight together on the board to make sure that they do uh, that I have cut them so they have an equal top and bottom for when the doors closing. I used an embosser a wood just a plain wood embosser you can see that there, yeah, that I lightly emboss my wood door with and I'm going to be adding the traditional white cross door detail on these. So I'm going to wait till they dry to do that. And you can see there that when I cut, you can still see the opening for the straws there. I made sure that they're still open because what I have already put into my cake and I'll show you that when it's finished is these dowels. Okay, so they're adhered to into the cake board in place. So all I have to do once these door, doors are dry is to insert the doors onto the skewers like this and then the door will just swing open. 
what I, the only other thing I'll probably add is a, like a little doorknob. I don't know what I'm going to do for that, but you'll see when I do do it. Easy. Okay. Next stage, I'm going to go let this dry. I'm going to go finish the cake. I'm going to add the wood detail and you'll see me when it's time to put the doors on the cake and you'll be able to see the surprise that lays inside. Hi and welcome back to my farm cake. You can see now that it's been finished. It's been two days since I since you last heard from me and that was when I was making the doors for the cake. So in between I've allowed them to dry. I've added a few more decorations and then a few more and then a few more because that's what I do. And I've come together with my farmyard seeing cake, which I absolutely love. So to quickly go through and I'll show you a closer up later is the silo that is very much like the traditional barnyard uh, barnyards that are around. Um, an outhouse with a little chalkboard sign for Peter's farm and a little vegetable patch. And then we have the traditional shaped barn house with some hay bales and the animals that are the surprise inside. You can see there, if I turn it around, the animals are all inside the house. Okay, and I've got the post here ready for my dowels. Oh, these are dowels ready for my doors to sit on. So they'll act as the pivot for the doors. What I have added on here, and you can see, I'll quickly bring it in so you can see the loops. Okay, so they're just 18 gauge floral wire, and I'll show you what I did here. So it's the 18 gauge floral wire covered so you can put it directly into the cake and I'm going to what I did was I just bent it around so that I ended up with a loop that would sit over the top of these skewers it probably it might not need it but what I wanted to do was make sure that even though these skewers are secured into my cake board I wanted to make sure that they sat up towards the cake just to stop the door from moving from moving down so that's what I've done and ta -da, I finished my doors as you can see I've added in the white cross detail that is traditional with these style of doors we still have the straw in the middle they're nice and thick they do sit together I, I did have to trim them, trim them a little bit but that is easy enough to do so much easier to make them a little bit bigger than too small so you can see now, and now I'm going to put my doors onto the cake. So just slightly move it over to the side and place where the straw is onto the dowel, slide it down. And then with this piece of wire, just move the door over and gently push that wire down. See? And that way it's joined on. And I'm going to do this for well, this one too. We have this here. And I'm going to do exactly the same as what I did to the other one. Gently. It's very hard. Sorry, I'm going to just turn it around so I can do it with my... Hand that I'm comfortable with. Okay, so sitting on top, what you can see, doors are open. Barn doors are open. And peekaboo, the barn doors are now going to close. Made it put them too close on the centre. There you go. Peekaboo! What I'm going to do and add on something here now is because I don't like to see things like that on top, I've got a little piece of white fondant and I'm just going to add like a, a white round knob on top and it's not going to be doing anything it's more decorative and it's more um, to hide that wire there so i'm just going to do two balls of white fondant same size maybe I'll leave this one a little bit bigger
I'm going to add a little bit of water onto that. A little bit of water onto that. It's just water. Okay. And I'm just going to sit it on just so it sits flush with that wire. Much better. That makes me happy. There you go. He's all done. So I'm going to photograph him now. And when I'm, I've got him in my little photograph area where you have better light, I'll come back and show you a better look of this opening up and closing. See? Just something little. But you know what? I think my client is absolutely going to love it. Are you ready to see it properly? Here we go. Open the doors. Peekaboo! There's the farm animals. I think they're having a bit of a party in there for Peter. They're waiting for him. So we better surprise the birthday boy. Close the doors again. And there he is. We're going to get up closer. Do you want to see it one more time? Come on, I know you do. Let's go again. One, two, three. Well, surprising myself with my cleverness. Hee. Hope you enjoy it. I'm going to go show you close-ups now too. Okay. Close-ups coming now. Here he is, the cake. I'm going to go in closer so you can see all the details now. Okay, so we have Peter's farm, cabbages and carrots. There's always a bit of straw and hay hanging around. We have some hay bales and we have a window at the top waiting for the chicken. Where is that chicken? It's probably getting, probably getting ready for the party. Number one, just for a bit of a spin on that, oh, excuse the pun, spin on one of those wind, um, wind turn around things. If anyone knows, please tell me. And the barn doors are closed. Probably because something's going on in there. Let's just see, shall we? What they are up to. This is a very sneaky farm. Whoa, hello. We have Fred the horse, Penny the pig. I don't want to call people names. Bar the sheep and Moo the cow in a barn filled with hay so there it is it's going to be a surprise for peter so i hope you enjoyed just that little tutorial and how to on how to make a simple pivot and i'm sure there are other ways of doing it but if you wanted to find something to do something like this with everyday materials that you would usually have at home think a little bit differently sometimes and you can achieve things Hope you enjoyed it.